Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on molecular representations, we'll be looking at how to draw an eclipsed Newman projection. In order to understand Newman projections, you first have to understand the difference between staggered and eclipsed conformations. So when we're looking at a staggered conformation, if you look at the backbone here, you'll see that the backbone is staggered, meaning that you have one group going up in the plane and then the other group going down in the plane, notably the group A and group F. If we look at the eclipse conformation, both of the groups in the plane are gonna be pointing in the same direction. So when we trace the backbone here, we see that we have the A group down as well as the F group pointing down. So that would represent the eclipse confirmation. In the last video I talked about how to draw a staggered Newman projection and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to draw the eclipsed Newman projection. So just like in the last video we're going to go ahead and look from one end of the molecule. So you can either be looking from this side of the molecule or from this side of the molecule. Sometimes in the problem they'll tell you that you're looking down carbons two to three for example, meaning that your front carbon would have to be carbon number two and your back carbon would be carbon number three. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and put my eyeball right here. So I'll go ahead and draw my cyclops man, meaning that he is looking in this direction. That would make this my front carbon and this will be my back carbon. And so right in front of him we've got this dot which represents the front carbon. And then we've got a big circle in the back to represent the back carbon. If we look first at the front carbon, straight down below cyclops man we've got letter F. So we're going to draw letter F attached to the front carbon straight down. And then if we remember wedges are coming out of the screen toward us from Cyclops Man's perspective, if he wanted to look over at the letter D here, he would be looking up and to the left. So we're going to put the letter D up and to the left. Then if he wanted to look at the letter E, he would be looking up and to his right. Just imagine if he were reaching up and to the right to grab on to letter E. So we're going to go ahead and and put letter E up and to the right. Now we can go ahead and move on to the back carbon. If we look at the back carbon, we have letter A pointing straight down. So from Cyclops Man's perspective, actually, letter F is covering letter A because they are both pointing straight down. So the way that we show this is we're going to put letter A just next to letter F as close as we can just to show that it is right behind letter F. The reason we don't actually write it right on top of letter F is because it would be difficult to read. But in reality, this illustration is showing that letter A is directly behind letter F. If we consider what would be directly behind letter D, it would be letter B, which is also up and on a wedge. From Cyclops Man's perspective, it is going to be up and to his left. So, just like we did with letter A, we are going to draw letter B as close as we can to letter D without having it be touching letter D. So we'll go ahead and put it like that. And then if we look at what is directly behind letter E, it's going to be letter C. So we're going to have letter C up and to the right. And again, we're going to put it close to letter E, but not touching letter E. And so that's how we're going to draw the eclipsed Newman projection for this molecule. Like I said in the last video, if you're having a hard time, you can use a little shortcut. So if Cyclops Man is looking to the right, that means that wedges are going to be on the right side and dashes are going to be on the left side. If Cyclops Man is looking in the opposite direction, meaning he is looking to the left, then we're going to actually have the wedges be pointing to the left and dashes are going to be pointing to the right. So the thing to remember is that wedges are going to follow whatever direction Cyclops Man is looking. So in this example, our Cyclops Man is looking to the left. And so if we look here, that would mean all of the wedges are going to be on the left. So we have letter B and D on wedges, and letter B and D are showing up on the left side. We would expect dashes to be on the right. We have C and E on dashes going up on dashes. So they are up and to the right, and that's how that works. Here we have an eclipse confirmation for you to practice drawing the Newman projection. Go ahead and pause the video and then you can check your work.
Okay, so first we want to identify that this is the front carbon and then this is the back carbon. So if we go ahead and trace the backbone here, we can see that this is indeed an eclipse conformation. The way that we know that this is an eclipse conformation is because the two substituents that are in the plane are both pointing in the same direction. Notably, we've got the methyl and the hydrogen both pointing up. So when we go to draw the Newman projection, we're going to start by drawing a dot to represent the front carbon and then a big circle behind it to represent the back carbon. If we start with the front carbon, from Cyclops Man's perspective, straight up he's going to see this methyl group. So we're going to start on the front carbon and draw the methyl CH3 straight up. And then if we look at the front carbon, what's on a wedge is coming out of the screen toward us. So from Cyclops Man's perspective, we're going to have this ethyl group that is going to be down and to the right. And then the fluorine is going to show up down and to the left since it's behind the computer screen. So from Cyclops Man's perspective, he'll have to reach down and to the left to get to that fluorine. Now let's go ahead and look at the back carbon. In the back, we've got a hydrogen, but the hydrogen is sticking straight up behind the methyl. So we're going to go ahead and draw the hydrogen as close as we can to the methyl on the back carbon. Then if we consider what is directly behind the fluorine, we are going to have the chlorine. So the chlorine is also down and to the left, and we're going to put it as close as we can to the fluorine. And then if we consider what's directly behind this ethyl group, we have a bromine. So the bromine is also down and to the right. So we're going to draw the bromine attached to the back carbon down and to the right. And that's how you draw the eclipse conformation for this molecule. However, like I said, if you're struggling to visualize, remember you can use that little shortcut. So you've got Cyclops man looking to the right, that means that wedges are going to be to the right and dashes are going to be to the left. So let's think about that. The ethyl and the bromine are on wedges, and so we would expect them to be on the bottom right, and they are. We've got the ethyl and the bromine here on the bottom right. If we look at the fluorine and the chlorine, they're both on dashes, and they're both going down to the left, and that's exactly what we expect to see when they're on dashes going down and to the left here. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.